In previous videos, we've already talked about the idea that there are times in Earth's orbit when it is closer to the sun and when it is further from the sun. And when it is closer to the sun, so let's say that this is the time of the orbit when it's closer to the sun, this is the perihelion. 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 And when it is furthest from the sun, and I'm exaggerating the difference, this is aphelion. This is the aphelion in our orbit. When we are close when we are furthest from the sun, and maybe our orbit Maybe our orbit looks something like this. So maybe our orbit looks something. I shouldn't have that bulge over there. So maybe our orbit looks something like this over here. And what I point out in the first video where we discussed this is that this is not the cause of the seasons. Even though we are 3% closer right now, Way, the way our orbit is set up, and we'll see in future videos that this, that the difference or the the eccentricity or how how elliptical the orbit is does change over time. How much it deviates from being circular. That's how you can. That's one way to think about eccentricity. That does change over time. But right now, when we are closest to the sun, we are three percent closer than when we are furthest from the sun. So three percent closer. Than at aphelion, and we point out in the first video when we discuss this that this is not the cause of the seasons, and in particular, in particular perihelion, when we are closest to the sun, when we actually have the most radiation from the sun, that's actually when we have the northern hemisphere, when we have the northern hemisphere winter. So this occurs right over here. This occurs in January. This occurs in January, and aphelion occurs in July. Occurs in July. Now, based on this, this might lead to an interesting question, because so let's think about January. Let's think about January when we're at perihelion, and let's think about July. Let's think about July. We're in aphelion, and let me draw a quick globe right over here, and let's make that the equator, and I'll draw it in both situations, in both situations. So January is obviously when we have the northern hemisphere winter. So I'll cold paint it. In blue, right over here, it is winter. Winter, and July is when we have the northern hemisphere summer or the southern hemisphere winter. So then we have winter. Winter during July in the southern hemisphere, and let me put summer in a in a more summery color. I guess that orange is a pretty good color. No, that's not orange. Here's orange. All right, that's orange, and that's orange. So these are summer, summer. So that's the summer in the southern hemisphere, which occurs during the winter in the northern hemisphere, and vice versa. Summer in the northern hemisphere occurs during winter in the southern hemisphere. And so the question might be rising in your head, and I did see a few comments on that first video asking this question, and it's a good one. If we are closer, if we are closer to the sun. In January, or we are really closest to the sun in January. This is the perihelion right over here, and so we're getting more solar radiation in January. Does that moderate the winter? Does that moderate the winter? So does that moderate the winter in the northern hemisphere? Or I guess another way to think about it: Does it make the win does it make the summer in the southern hemisphere when we are closer to the sun? Does it make it more extreme? Does it make it more extreme or hotter? And vice versa, in July, when we are when we are furthest from the sun, does that moderate the northern hemisphere winter because it's hot up there? But hey, we're a little bit further from the sun, and does it make the southern hemisphere winter colder? So once again, does it make this more extreme because it's already winter and we're further from the sun? So maybe we're also getting less radiation. And so there's a couple of ways to think about it. One, it is true. That when we're further, we are getting a little bit less radiation from the sun, or we're getting heated up a little bit less. But the one reality is that the southern hemisphere climate, as a whole, is not more extreme, despite getting heated up, getting more solar energy in the summer, and getting less solar energy in the winter. And the reason why it is not as extreme, let me draw the equator here, just so that we can separate our hemispheres. The the main reason it is believed that is not more extreme is that the southern hemisphere has a lot more water in it. 
So just if you look at the surface of the southern hemisphere, you're looking at a lot more water than the surface of the northern hemisphere. And this, is, of course, is a Mercator projection. And so it distorts things so that things near the poles get really kind of built up to look really huge, even though they really aren't that big. Greenland really isn't the larger than South America. It just spreads them out so that you can kind of, so that you don't have to have, so you can flatten out the map, so to speak. But the southern hemisphere has more water. And as you may have learned in chemistry class, water has a higher specific heat, higher specific energy. It takes a higher specific energy. It takes more energy, more heat, to raise water a degree than it does to take to raise, say, a, to raise land a, a degree. And so water can absorb more energy. Or when there's less energy, water will release more energy without dropping as much of a temperature. So water has a moderating influence. Water has a moderating influence on the climate. So I, even though the summers in the southern hemisphere actually are getting more radiation than the summers in the northern hemisphere, it's moderated on the actual temperature because the water has the ability to absorb more of that heat without changing the temperature as dramatically. Now with that said, it is true that in general, Antarctica is colder. Antarctica is colder is colder than the North Pole. But the main reason why Antarctica is colder, besides the fact that it's on land, as opposed to Antarctica being the, 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 the as opposed to the North Pole being in the center of the Arctic Ocean, is that it's actually a huge, very high altitude ice sheet. And so the, the altitude for most of Antarctica is around 8,000 feet. So it's kind of like an alpine altitude. So the main reason why it's colder is you know, possibly being further away from the sun in winter might play some role there. But the main reason why it's colder is it is it's just at a much higher altitude and it's to some degree insulated from the water or I guess you could say it's on the land so especially during the long winters it's going to get that much colder but I'll leave you there and and to some degree and this is the other aspect of it during the summers the the and you know all of this stuff is super complicated so you can't you know you can't just throw out one rule of thumb and say this is the reason but these are all influences is that if you have a large super large ice sheet it's also more likely to reflect more of the energy because it's white as opposed to a darker color like the ocean or the land. And so you can think about all of those factors, but the general answer is it's a good question, but overall the climate in the southern hemisphere is not more extreme than the climate in the southern hemisphere, even though Antarctica is colder.